Hi, I'm Sharla with Freezer Meals 101. Welcome, it is Christmas season and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my holiday baking, but I'm also going to be sharing how I fill so many stockings. We have 13 stockings to fill this year, so I'll just take you through kind of how we do stockings in our house and how I'm saving money because, oh my goodness, you never really realize how expensive a large family is until it comes to Christmas. <laughs> and so I've learned some tricks over the years and I'll be sharing those with you later in this video. But before we get to that, we're gonna do baking. It's really weird to be standing here in my kitchen and doing a video and not have Christy with me. For those of you who are new here, Christy's my neighbor and bestie and she lives two doors that way. And normally she's here with me and we're teaching you how to do freezer meals and we're doing them together. But because it's Christmas baking, we're each doing it in our own home. So Christy did her own holiday baking video and we did overlap on one recipe, but the rest are all unique. So you'll see different recipes in each of the videos. I'll put a link to her video right there and I'll also link it at the end of this video so you can get double the holiday baking ideas. Let's get to the baking. This next recipe is the first Christmas cookie I ever remember making on my own. I got the recipe in high school from my friend Laura. So I call them Laura's Toffee Cookies. What you do is you're going to take three Macintosh toffee bars. They can be a little bit hard to find. So if you can't find them, you can also buy the Macintosh toffee squares, but then you have to take each individually wrapped one out of the wrapper so it does add to the time. But anyway, you're gonna take your Macintosh toffee bars and here's the part that's the most fun. You're going to throw them hard on the ground in their package so that they break into bits. My kids obviously like to help with this part. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Uh, once you've got your toffee broken up, you put that in a microwave safe bowl, add in three tablespoons of butter and one tablespoon of cream or milk. And you're gonna microwave that for 30 seconds at a time and you stir after each time. Uh, usually I'll put it in like 45 seconds the first time and then stir and then 30 seconds each time after that. When it's fully melted, you're gonna take it out of the microwave and stir in three cups of cornflakes. Once that's stirred, you just set it down in clumps. They don't have to be packed down at all. Just put them in spoonfuls onto some wax paper. Once they firm up, you can transfer them into a freezer bag. Now, these do tend to break because they're, you know, not held together super well but that's part of the fun because it's really fun to eat the crumbs and nobody complains about all the little bits that are left in the bag after. Never had anybody not wanna help me with cleaning up that mess. So as easy as that, all you need is a microwave and a few minutes and you can have Laura's toffee cookies. These raspberry almond thumbprint cookies are probably my personal favorite Christmas cookie. I've been making them for about four years now. I will put the recipe down in the description below. They are from Sally's Baking Addiction. She has really good recipes for cookies specifically. So you take, well, I'm doubling the recipe. So I will talk as though I am just making a single recipe, but this is doubled. You take one cup of unsalted butter and you whip that up and then you add uh, two thirds of a cup sugar, mix that in, and then you're gonna add some vanilla almond extract. In my case, I'm using an imitation almond extract because one of our daughters is allergic to nuts, um, some salt, 
and you're gonna mix all of that together and then add some flour, two and a quarter cups of flour, and you make that into a dough and cover it with plastic wrap. It needs to chill for at least three hours, so I usually chill mine overnight. And then you're gonna shape the dough into balls. Um, I use a co cookie scoop to do that. Then you're gonna make an indentation with your thumb in each ball and fill it with a teeny tiny bit of raspberry jam. Once they come out of the oven and are cooled, then you're gonna to top them with an icing. I like to put mine in a sandwich bag and just snip off the corners so that I can drizzle it out really nicely. The icing is just some icing sugar, some cream or milk, and more of that almond extract. You can use vanilla if you prefer, but I find that the almond is really nice. So that's it. These freeze nicely, even with the icing on them, but you do need to wait for the icing to set before you put them in a freezer bag and put them in the freezer. Every year, I'm always on the hunt for a new Christmas cookie recipe or Christmas squares or some kind of holiday baking. And that's how I've gotten some of my best recipes. So sometimes I try them out and I only make them that one year. But if they're amazing, then obviously they get carried over into future years. So this year, a new one that I'm going to try is London Fog Icebox Cookies. I asked in a local mom's group on Facebook for holiday recipes, and this is one of the ones that was suggested to me. And let me tell you, they had me at London Fog. London Fog is my favorite drink by far. And so hearing London Fog cookies made me a definite yes to trying these. So we're going to do two and a half cups flour, half a teaspoon of baking powder, stir that together, and then add two tablespoons of finely ground Earl Grey tea leaves. This says that that'll take about eight tea bags, so we shall see. And then a quarter teaspoon of orange zest. We're gonna add that into the flour mixture now. I am a fan of orange zest, so we'll probably be a little more generous than a quarter teaspoon. Um, then in a different bowl, we're going to beat one cup of butter with three quarters of a cup sugar, one egg, one teaspoon of vanilla. Again, I might be a little more generous there because I like vanilla. And we're going to beat that until they it's fluffy and gradually beat in the flour mixture. Put that in a ball, uh, divide that dough in half, roll each portion into a two inch wide log, wrap the logs in wax paper and twist the ends. Hmm, I've never wrapped a log in wax paper before. I usually do it in plastic wrap, but I guess we're gonna follow these instructions. It says chill until firm, so one to one and a half hours, and then slice cookies into quarter inch rounds and arrange one inch apart on a baking sheet that's lined with parchment paper. Bake at 350 degrees, 10 to 12 minutes. It says to let the cookies cool on uh, wire racks but I don't own wire racks, so I guess we will just let them cool on a plate or something. And then we're going to whisk half a cup of icing sugar with one tablespoon of milk and brush the cookies with a thin layer of that icing. So this seems a little bit more involved than what I'm used to, but for the flavor of a London Fog, I'll try anything. I haven't made this Chex Mix in a long time, but I love to make it to bring for camping or for the holidays just to munch on. It's nice to have on hand, and I don't know if you knew this or not, but you can freeze it, so it's perfect. 
We're gonna use nine to 10 cups of Chex cereal, some two and a half cups of pretzels, one cup of peanuts, six tablespoons olive oil, three tablespoons Worcestershire sauce, two teaspoons seasoning salt, three teaspoons of onion powder. In this case, we're using a dry three onion blend. We're gonna mix that together in a large bowl, spread it onto a baking sheet and bake at 250 for one hour, stirring occasionally. Once it's cool, we'll transfer it to a large freezer bag and then it can be frozen and you can pour out like a little at a time to enjoy in a bowl to snack on or set it out for a holiday party. I will put the link to the recipe down below. Two things I wanna mention about Chex Mix. One is that a lot of times I will add the original bugles into my Chex Mix and that is the best part for me. So I always do that with our camping Chex Mix. I don't always do it for the holiday one, but feel free to add bugles into yours. The other thing I wanted to mention is that this can easily be made gluten-free because Chex cereal is already gluten-free. So all you need to do is buy gluten-free pretzels and then this snack can be enjoyed by everyone, even if they're on a gluten-free diet. This Boater Kook is my sister-in-law Deanne's recipe. It is so, so good. Boater Kook is a Dutch thing that I'm guessing translates into butter cake. You'll see why in a second. You're gonna take one and a third cup butter, two cups of sugar, three teaspoons almond extract. I'm using imitation almond, of course, because of our daughter's allergy. Two eggs that are beaten. Um, actually, no, we're not gonna beat them. We're just gonna put them in there like this. And we're gonna mix all of that together. Then we're gonna add three cups of flour and a teaspoon of baking powder. And you just brush a bit of cream on top of it so that it browns up nicely and bake it in the oven at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. This is a really, really good one to have with tea in the morning when you're waiting for the rest of your family to wake up to open stockings. This butter tart recipe is from that same sister-in-law. She is a great baker and I am not, so I take her good recipes and then I'm guaranteed to have crowd pleasers. I like to make the butter tarts at the same time or immediately after I make the boater kook because for the boater kook, you're using one and a third cups butter and for the butter tarts, you're using um, two thirds of a cup butter that's melted and so that t uses an entire two cup butter thing and then I don't have to measure the second amount of butter because I already know exactly what it is. So you're going to take two cups of brown sugar, one cup of chopped pecans, two eggs that are beaten, two teaspoons vanilla, two ta four tablespoons of milk, and then that two-thirds of a cup melted butter. Mix all of that together and pour it into 20 tart shells that you've put out on a cookie sheet to stabilize them. You're gonna bake that in a 350 degree oven until the shells have browned a bit. Allow them to cool before you put them in the freezer. Let's pop in and see how I managed to fill 13 stockings and then we'll do some more baking recipes together. One of the things that I've been asked about a lot over the years, so I thought I would share with you, is how I fill so many stockings and stay in a budget. So this year, I have 13 stockings to fill, and that can get extremely expensive. When your kids are super young, it's easier and less expensive because you can go to the dollar store and buy just little trinkety things, and they're thrilled and you can fill it with just little tiny toys and candy and not spend very much. But as your kids get older, and once they're teens and young adults, they are not as thrilled with little candies and little dollar store trinkets. So it gets harder to fill it and stay within budget. This year, I've really had to think outside the box 
but I'm super happy with what I've come up with and I'm going to share that with you. So one of the things, of course, that my teens and young adults wanted on their Christmas wish list was gift cards. But gift cards cost money and lots of it when there's this many stockings to fill. So I was able to trade my reward points from our local grocery store for gift cards. I was able to get $550 worth of gift cards for free. Zero. I traded my rewards points to get that. Another thing that we really like to include for our kids in their gifts is experiences. So in past years, one of the things we've done is get a family pass to a local museum, a ski hill, a local botanical garden. But now that some of our kids are adults, we don't qualify for the family passes. So that no longer worked. But what I was able to do this year is I was able to trade my air miles for movie passes. So I was able to get eight single movie passes along with one movie pass that is good for two people plus, you know, the popcorn and pop and all of that, plus one movie pass for a single person that also includes the popcorn and pop. So that was a really good find. And it was a special that Air Miles was having at the time. Another thing that I do is get practical things. So I will go to Costco or another warehouse store that we have here, and I will buy bulk packs of things like razors, deodorant, toothpaste. Now I know it's not that exciting, but it is practical. One of the things that I really like to do with my stockings is to make sure that my kids feel seen and known and loved. Because they grew up in a large family, I never wanted them to feel like they were just a number or just like one of. I really wanted them to feel like I know them and that I'm listening when they talk to me and that I care about what it is that they're passionate about and what they like. So throughout the course of the year, I listen carefully for things like if they're telling me their favorite candy or if they're telling me like um, a music thing, an art thing, um, a even a you know movie, TV kind of a thing that they're really into, then I put that in the notes on my phone so that I have a list of things that each of my kids are interested in or that they love or that they're favorites. And I can refer to that list when I do my Christmas stocking shopping. But now that some of my kids are getting engaged, getting married, I have these new kids that have joined our family. I guess they're not kids, they're young adults, but they've joined our family and I don't know them as well as I know my kids. So that's been a bit of a challenge, but again, I use the notes on my phone and when I am spending time with them and they mention something, I remember to jot it down in those notes so that I can grab that later. Um, uh, one of our sons is recently engaged and when we were visiting her, his fiance mentioned that she loves those Terry's chocolate oranges. So I made sure to make a note for myself and she also likes candles and books. I know that about her. so. Her stocking is going to reflect the things that I know about her. And that is true for each of our kids. I really want on this day and every day for them to feel like they are important to me, that they are special, and that I've chosen things that are really, really specifically for them. Now, in this video, I'm going to be showing you me filling some of the stockings. There is one stocking that I will not be filming on video because one of my daughters does the closed captioning for my YouTube videos and I don't want her, of course, to see what's in her stocking. So she will know that, uh, that she's likely getting a movie gift card and that she's getting the practical things she gets every year, but I don't want her to know those really specific 
things that I am getting just special for her. One of the other things I do to save money is I look for sales throughout the year. And when there is something that I know would go well in somebody's stocking, I grab it at the sale price. Not only does that enable me to get it on sale, but it also takes the sting out of having to buy everything in December because otherwise December is a super expensive month for us. We also have two kids with birthdays in December. So I try as best I can to kind of spread out the cost of Christmas throughout the year. Um, one of the other things that we do is we have our kids, now that they're older, we have them open their stockings one at a time and we go from youngest to oldest. What this does is it allows us to kind of slow things down and for when the one person is opening their stocking for the other people in the room to get to know them a little bit more through kind of their reactions and through what they're currently interested in. And it just allows us to spend a little bit more time together that morning rather than like everyone tearing through their stockings all at once. And then that whole thing being over. And I know for me, because I put so much thought and effort and time and months really into planning all of this out, it just allows me to see everyone's reactions and allows me to enjoy kind of the fruits of my labor a little bit more. So that's something that, like I said, we didn't do that when they were young because that that would have been kind of cruel to ask them to wait to open their stockings for so long. But now that they're older and Christmas stockings is the only thing that we do on Christmas morning in terms of gifts because they open their one gift from us Christmas Eve and they also choose names among themselves so they open the gift from whoever chose their name that year also on Christmas Eve so and any grandparent gifts and that kind of thing are Christmas Eve so Christmas morning all we have to do is open our stockings and then go and have a really nice family breakfast together which of course I have made ahead in our last freezer meal session. I should also mention that I don't set our stockings out downstairs, hang them nicely on the chimney like most families do. What I've found over the years works best for me is actually to fill the stockings up in my room. We have a lock on our door so the kids can't see what's in them, but this allows me to really plan things out and I line them up from oldest to youngest so I know whose is whose and then I fill them and if I'm missing things, then I'll put a post-it note on the stocking to remind myself of what that person is missing. This also allows me to see if there's one that's like, you know, got too much and one that doesn't have enough. And I don't make them exactly equal, but I like them to be equitable. So that's how I do it, which is, I know, different than most families, but it was just a sanity saver in those early years when the kids were younger and um, Christmas was so busy and I've just kept with it and no one complains. My husband is Dutch and so one of the things that they do traditionally is the chocolate letter with the first letter of your name. So we get everyone a chocolate letter every year, of course. I don't get an ornament for each of the kids every year. I used to and then it just got to be too much. But I do keep an eye out and if there's something extra special or something they've accomplished that year, like getting a job, getting their driver's license, graduating, um, a hobby that's just really, really obvious, something they've overcome, then I do sometimes buy an ornament that represents that. And so this year I did find three ornaments that really suited some of my daughters. And so I did buy ornaments for their stockings. Um, the Tree of Life is a bit of a family thing where one of my sister-in-laws has started it and some of our girls have necklaces or earrings with it and so I just found that really fitting. And then another one of our daughters has gone through a really hard time and overcome a lot this year and she loves butterflies 
and so I loved this spread your wings ornament. I just thought it was perfect to represent kind of the stage she's at and everything that she's overcome this year. And this one says, you are beautifully and wonderfully made. And I thought it was a really good reminder for our oldest daughter who just lost her hair again to alopecia, just that she is so beautiful outside and inside and that she is perfect the way she is. So Christy told me about this cool thing that she used to do when she was a kid or a teenager, I guess, called Spark in the Dark. And what you need to do it is you need these wintergreen lifesavers. And just after she told me about it, we went to a candy store in a mountain town called Canmore and we found wintergreen lifesavers. So I got enough to put in everybody's stocking. And what you do with these is you go in a dark room and you chew them with your mouth open. Sounds gross, but anyway. And it actually creates sparks that are visible. And we Googled it and there is some kind of scientific phenomenon for why this happens. But I just thought it would be a really fun thing to do on Christmas day and kind of an inexpensive way to get my kids into something and uh, have them all having fun together. So I'm gonna add these to all of the stockings. I hope that some of these tips that I've given you have helped you to come up with ideas of how you might be able to save some money this year or next year when you are filling your Christmas stockings. I've been making these chocolate crinkles since my oldest boys were babies. I've been making them forever. I don't know where I got the recipe from originally. This is such a simple recipe because you only need four ingredients. You're gonna use two boxes of devil's food cake mix, four eggs, and two thirds of a cup of vegetable oil. Mix all of that together, roll your dough into balls, and then you take those balls and roll them in a bowl that has some icing sugar in it. Then you're going to bake these in a 350 degree oven for eight to 10 minutes. As you take them out of the oven, you slap the cookie tray on the counter. This squishes them down and creates that crinkle look. So chocolate crinkles. I'm super excited about this hot sauce puzzle. It seems like a funny thing to be excited about, but as soon as I found it, I felt so much better because one of our sons lives in a different province and we're not gonna be able to see him this Christmas. Usually we do a Christmas puzzle as a family and he is right in there. He loves doing the puzzle with us. He's kind of our biggest and best puzzler and it made my heart feel sad that he wasn't gonna be with us for this puzzle time this year. So when I found this puzzle that I could send him so that he and his fiance could do a puzzle on their own, it just warmed my heart because he collects hot sauces. So it is just the perfect, perfect thing to be able to send. A staple at our house for Christmas time is definitely the butterscotch confetti squares. I'm getting my recipe out of the Companies Coming 150 Delicious Squares Cookbook from 1985. The original is 1981. This is a reprint version from 1985. So this has been around for a while. Um, I double it because it's meant for a nine by nine pan. And so I always make mine in a nine by 13. And I'm actually gonna be making two batches. So I double it and then double it again. I line my 9x13 pan with some wax paper and then I put the colored mini marshmallows, which is two cups of them, on the bottom. Then on the stove top, I melt half a cup of butter, one cup of peanut butter, and once that's melted, I stir in two cups of butterscotch chips. Once that's fully melted, I take it off the stove and let it cool just to the point where I can put my hand on the bottom of the pot and not get burnt. <laughs> and then I pour that over the mini marshmallows. Once they're totally cool, then I take the wax paper out and slice them up. These freeze beautifully and keep for 
actually a few months, although in our house, they never last that long. This year, I'm really looking forward to spending the holidays with our kids. Most of our kids are still living at home, but we do have a few that are away. Like I mentioned earlier, our son lives in another province and won't be celebrating with us this year. But one new addition that we have this year is our first grandbaby. He's just four months old, so he won't remember this Christmas, but it will be wonderful to have him around and to get in lots of baby snuggles. I hope that you and your family enjoy a wonderful Christmas together. I would love to hear how you do stockings in your home, any ideas that you have for me, for how to fill my stockings for next year on an even tighter budget would be appreciated. I consider it actually a huge blessing that I have so many stockings to fill. I don't think of it as a burden, although I, did, I may have complained a bit about the thought process that goes into trying to plan all the stockings out. But truly, I see it as a reflection of how blessed we are that we have so many people to love. And I hope that you have people in your life that you can love on this Christmas as well. I'm gonna put Christy's video right there so you can check out her holiday baking. I will see you after the holidays. Merry Christmas and happy cooking.